What's up, guys? Um, so, I guess we're knocking out care videos this week. It's just what we're doing. Um, I don't really showcase these or take really pictures or post about these at all, but um, I have a colony of these. They're dermestid beetles or um, hide beetles. You know, uh, Dermestes maculatus, they're the species used for taxidermy. Um, I don't really do any taxidermy, um, but I do sell to people who do, and then also sell them for like, um, if you have a roach colony, uh, they can be a cleanup crew, although with these you kind of got to watch since um, they are quite hungry guys, and I have seen them go after live roaches if they're hungry enough, so definitely keep an eye out or give them food or feed them if you're using them to clean up after your roaches. Uh, a safer bet would be, uh, what are they called, buffalo beetles. Uh, those would be a little bit uh, more safe to use uh, than these, but these do work. Um, so for their setup, how big is this tub? Um, I actually have two tubs for these guys. So there's the adult tub, and then there's the grow-up tub. This is the grow-up tub. Um, the adult tub isn't set up that much more different. Uh, it's just basically just bigger and it has a couple more places to lay eggs. Um, but this is a 20 quart tub, it says on the side. So um, they're bedding, it's aspen. Uh, you can use uh, other wood shavings as long as it's not like pine or cedar. Um, I just use aspen. I know people who've used Carefresh um, and other type of non-toxic you know, beddings and stuff, but I just like aspen because it's cheap and easy. Um, the styrofoam is actually for, um, basically what I do is I collect larva from, you know, the adult tub. They'll eat and grow and shed and whatnot, and then they'll bore into the styrofoam uh, so that way they can pupate. And once they're bored into the styrofoam to pupate, I then take them out and I throw the styrofoam into the adult tub and, you know, rinse and repeat. Um, that's the best way I've found to do it. I'm sure there's other people who do it differently or just culture them all at once. Um, but I mostly like to sell the larva. Um, I know for taxidermy purposes, it's better to sell the larva and the adults um, at the same time, just so that way you can have quicker results with uh, stripping your carcasses. Um, but because I sell smaller colonies and it's for people who are using them for smaller purposes, I only sell the larvae because the larvae are when they're eating the most and they have the most guaranteed lifespan. So like if I sell somebody a colony of like, I don't know, a hundred of them and they're mostly adults, I don't know if a lot of those adults are really old. They might kick the bucket any day. So selling larvae guarantees you have more lifespan out of your, uh, your colony and uh, they'll eat more meat before they start to turn into adults and uh, they won't all die on you. Um, so these guys can't climb uh, smooth plastic or glass however the adult uh, beetles can fly but they won't fly as long as you keep their you know the area that they're in under about 80 degrees. Around 75 degrees is the, the sweet spot for these guys uh, 75 to 78 um, that'll get them going real quickly um, so the adults, they lay their eggs in and around the carcass, and they'll also lay them on the styrofoam, um, but mostly around the carcass inside the bedding. Um, so you don't have to worry about if you throw out like an old carcass, you don't typically have to worry that much about that many eggs being on or around it. Um, although I do not recommend to feed. Um, so feed your bugs. I feed them every day, but I do not feed them enough to where it carries on over into like more than another day so it's what they can eat in like a few hours I don't like for things to be getting smelly up in here because it's already you know I got tons of animals you know we try to keep smells down as much as possible not encourage smells so if you look in this piece of styrofoam you can already see um, here and here uh, larvae that have burrowed in so they're probably gonna pupate soon and uh, down the below is a, uh, it's like a deli cup lid, and then I put a few uh, pinkies that were freezer burned and pretty much useless, and then uh, a frozen thawed mouse. Um, there's about, I don't know, uh, I, I counted around a thousand uh, of these, so there's probably like a little over a thousand in this container. 
And uh, this is a t actually a little bit bigger of a meal than I u usually give them. So I'm really hoping that they, they tackle it. They're, they're on it pretty good. Um, but we'll see. Um, hopefully by like morning or whatever. Let's see. It's like, uh, it's like 3 o'clock in the afternoon right now. Hopefully by like, uh, I don't know, 10 or 11 o'clock in the morning. Uh, when I check on these, it'll all be, uh, it'll all be bones mostly. Or not even bones. So here's the thing with these. Um, you have to be careful if you're using them for really delicate taxidermy, um, because if they are hungry enough, they will start to eat more connective tissue and gnaw on softer bones. Um, all that stuff is fair game. You know, you got to know the right time to take it out. Um, it's a lot easier to gauge, like, if you're doing, like, larger animal skulls and stuff. Uh, they typically can't really hurt the bone unless you leave it in there for forever. Um, I have seen them, like you know, get into, like, softer parts of bone, like spongy bone, um, but that's relatively rare, you don't have to worry about it that much, um, as far as, like, the amount it takes to do what you're trying to do, so, like, if you're using, like, a small carcass, like, say, this mouse, or a rat, or a squirrel, or a dead bird you found, like, a smaller dead bird, I don't know what you weirdos are trying to use these for, um, if you're using it for like a smaller animal, like a, a small whole carcass, like um, around a thousand will do ya, you know. Uh, a thousand larvae should clean that up pretty good before it gets all nasty and gross. Um, if you're doing something larger, like um, a small skull, like a small rabbit or a cat skull or something like that, um, I would go with around two to four thousand. Um, you, you need a surprisingly good amount um, because, you know, they're tiny bugs. Yeah, if you don't want any stench, then I recommend uh, putting a decent amount so that way they can finish it off in like, you know, uh, a couple days at most. Um, or I know some people, if you don't care about the stench, um, you can put something bigger in there and leave it in your garage if you don't care if it smells a little bit. Um, they'll get it done, it'll just take longer and there might be some smell in the meantime. Um, but if you don't want any smells, definitely make sure you use a lot of beetles and then uh, take out quickly because they're, they're probably going to be hungry if you don't give them enough to satisfy all of them. Uh, that covers most of the basics. Uh, cleaning these, uh, yeah, there's really not a very good way to do it. Most of the, the larvae come up to the surface, but except for the tiny ones with their frass, the frass builds up in the bottom. And uh, the, the first ones that hatch out the eggs will often hang out at the bottom and eat that fresh frass along with like the discarded uh, molts of the older ones. Hmm. What else? What else? What else? Um, yeah, uh, if, you're, if you're doing like a big, big skull or an animal carcass, you need tens of thousands of these in order to get it done within a timely manner um, before things start to get really nasty. Um, the other thing with these is that, uh, they don't like just any kind of meat in any kind of condition, and what I mean by this is that, um, they don't like, so, like, if you were to, like, take some ground beef and just toss it in there, they they'll probably nibble on it a little bit, um, but they're not really gonna go nuts for it. You want stuff that's, like, a little bit older and drier, a little bit more leathery, it's, uh... So that they're called hide beetles. They don't like things squish, squishy and soft um, to eat. But uh, yeah, that's about it for these guys. Um, I might do a time lapse of this or at least take update photos and post them on my Instagram. Um, see how long that this took and what the aftermath is. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions uh, or if you want to pick up a colony of these, I'll have some at the San Jose Reptile Show. Um, but yeah, questions, comments... Uh, like, comment, share, subscribe. Uh, have a good night, guys.